With the new season of Cobra Kai coming up, I figured it'd be a perfect time to check out the continuity of the classic Karate Kid series. And what better place to do it than in the location of the original Cobra Kai dojo itself. That's right, this is the original spot uh, for the original movies, not, not the show. They actually shoot that in Atlanta. Um, so this was just the classic movies location. It's not a dojo anymore as you can kind of see from that um, but yeah so we're going to check this out to see if this makes any sense or if we need to get it a body bag we start kicking back in 1984 with the karate kid which starts in new jersey in september and the larusso family is moving to california there's young daniel who's a bit of an outsider and his mom and they move into a rundown apartment which is actually right here um actually in reseda looking fairly similar to the way that he used to look with a maintenance man named mr miyagi who i guess no longer runs arnold's daniel goes to the beach and gets eyes from stillwell but she has a guy and it's william zabka who you may remember from no less than three douche blonde jerk villains from the 80s he he pretty much had that market cornered i'm gonna start right now with the whole johnny is the good guy stuff and point out that ali is clearly not with johnny anymore and he is being very aggressive to her Daniel literally just steps in to try to calm the situation down and gets hit. He is not the bad guy here. He goes to a new school that was founded in 1969, and there's a Family Circle magazine on the counter that's from 1969, which is weird. That's the second 69 reference so far, and keep in mind that that's not accidental. That magazine was chosen by the prop department to be there. So there was just some sort of insistence with the multiple 69s. Because, get this, Lucille's station wagon that they drove cross country in? A 1969 Chevrolet Malibu. Daniel ends up at the Cobra Kai Dojo and it's run by, what, what, what do I do? Uh, no normally when Martin Cove is in a movie, I just, I call him Crease. But here he is, Crease. so that doesn't make sense. Crease served in Nam from 70 to 72, and again, there's now been several instances of Johnny and his gang antagonizing him, and now run his bike off the road and down a hill, potentially seriously injuring him. How did this whole Johnny is the good guy theory work again? Time passes as soon as it's Halloween and Daniel and Miyagi bond and I guess Miyagi just loans him his shower costume. Um, this is hanging up at his place. Like he just has this random shower costume on his wall or I, I guess shower parts, whatever. So then Daniel splashes Johnny with water, which, oh no, not water. But then he does run out into traffic and cause several accidents, which is far more of a dick thing to do than the water thing. And then they bone him. And again, for all you Johnny apologists, Daniel literally splashed him and they severely beat him up. So, so maybe shut up about all that. Miyagi saves him and agrees to train him. And there's the All Valley Championships coming up on December 19th and they challenge Cobra Kai. The training begins with wax on, wax off, left circle, right circle, paint the fence, paint the house, only to reveal that the whole thing was simply training. But I want to point out that he could have simply told him this and showed him these techniques normally. There was no reason for the subterfuge. Miyagi just wanted chores done at the same time, so he worked up this whole trickery. There's a pretty random Dr. Giggles appearance, and we find out that Miyagi's wife died due to birth complications in 1944. And it's Daniel's birthday, presumably in late November or early December, and he gives him a car. And we briefly see the registration sticker, which is green, the color for real time 1984, so that's likely the year. And Daniel tells Allie it's the 80s, but I mean, we, we knew that. And okay, here's where things get interesting. The tournament is for brown belt or above. Daniel does not have an official ranked belt, so Miyagi fakes it and steals one for him. 
the tourney begins and Daniel starts to prove that he's the the, the best around and no one's ever going to keep him down. And I want to dispel a myth here. The myth that the kick to the face is illegal because Ali says the rules are that anything above the waist is a point and she includes the head in a list of things that can be hit. And then we see several people being hit in the face over the course of the tournament. In fact, Dutch kicks Daniel in the face in their bout. We see it several times. So again, maybe shut up about all that. Also, the tournament states that it's the under 18 all state and Daniel got his permit on his birthday. So he's either 16 or 17. And considering people are treating it like he finally got his license, I'm going with 17, although, although rewind, um, there are only 16 candles on this cake. So I guess he just turned 16, although every wiki entry I see lists this as his 18th birthday for some reason, which, you know, it is the under 18 uh, All-State Championship, so maybe not. But I mean, he's, he's cheating with the belt thing anyhow, so uh, whatever. In the semis, Bobby uses an illegal move, but Daniel continues on anyway while injured, taking on Johnny. Kreese tells him to sweep the leg, so I guess you should but he uses the crane kick to win, which is totally fine to do. The first film was a huge hit and made tons of money and got Marita both an Oscar and Golden Globe nomination. So two years later, we got The Karate Kid 2 and John Avildsen came back to direct. And is this the first time this credit has been used? Martin Cove re returning as Crease? This one starts with some recap scenes that freak me out because they're out of order for some reason. And then after the fight, we see Kreese and Miyagi fight with the whole big finishing move. <laughs> we then jump ahead six months, so it'd be June of the following year, which we're assuming to be 85 then. And Daniel's coming back from, wait, his senior prom? And and Allie left him. So let me get this straight. After Daniel went through all the crap for her in the first movie, they just up and had her hook up with some football guy a few months later. And, and senior prom? How was he a 16-year-old senior? I, I guess he actually was 17 and Miyagi just messed up the cake candles. Miyagi gets a letter saying his father is sick and we find out he left Okinawa because he broke up an arranged marriage. But he's now going back, so Daniel goes with him. He says he used his savings and he can always postpone college six months. So I think he's saying he planned to go to college in the fall. So yeah, he's a senior and graduating. He's picked up by Cho Zen, but it's a trap and he was sent by Sato who challenges him. When they get to the village, he sees his old flame as well as Kumiko. And here's a fun fact, in real life, Pat Morita has absolutely no accent and knew pretty much nothing about karate. Pops dies, so Sato gives Miyagi three days and Daniel gets bullied by Chozen. So they're sort of in Okinawa, but not really since the film was shot in Hawaii and things escalate. So they decide to go home, but a massive storm hits and Miyagi saves Sato's life. He forgives Miyagi, so there's a big celebration, but Chozen shows up to challenge Daniel to the death. They fight, and the crane kick doesn't work, so he instead utilizes the drum technique, which is the ancient Okinawa tactic of, I, I guess, just swinging your arms left and right over and over again. How is this a technique? Chozen gets honked, Honk. and the day is won yet again. That also made a bunch of cash, so you know a third part was coming, and it happened three years later with 1989's The Karate Kid Part 3, again by Avildsen. We get another recap of the first movie and the aftermath, and we pick up with Kreese, pretty destitute now, with no students, so he goes to his old friend Volok. And he says it's been nine months, so it's around September of 85 then here. And Daniel and Miyagi come home, without their lady friends though. 
Lucille reappears for a moment to explain that Uncle Louie is sick, so Daniel is staying with Miyagi, but we find out that Kumiko got a gig with a dance company in Tokyo. So man, Daniel has really crap luck with women moving on right after he fights someone. Perhaps he should learn that maybe beating people up doesn't really impress the ladies like he thinks that it does. The apartment gets sold, so Miyagi has to move, and Terry Silver swears to get revenge for Kreese. So, I, I guess Daniel instead uses his college money to sign a lease on a bonsai shop for Mr. Miyagi, because, you know, that's something they would allow a 17-year-old kid to do. Which was right here. Uh, the train tracks are right there coming across. Uh, the building was right here, which obviously looks much different now because uh, it was always an empty lot. They actually built that specifically for the movie. The pottery shop was actually right here, though. That is a real location, but not actually there. Terry enlists Mike Barnes, and this guy right here is the director's son, and there's a new rule in the tournament, which means that Daniel only has to fight the final battle, which is weird, because by the time that the new tournament occurs, Daniel will have turned 18, so he'd be too old for the tournament. He meets the girl who runs the pottery shop across the road, and she's the teen witch, and you know, in the first film, Ralph Macchio was 22 years old, which is pretty hard to believe, and he's 27 here. Terry says that the tournament was last year to confirm that this is just one year after the first film, and Barnes starts to try to pressure Daniel to join the tournament, which he finally does when they try to kill him? Since Miyagi won't train him, he goes to Silver, and there's a bit here where he talks about face contact and says that he'd be disqualified. Silver's ruse is soon uncovered, and they go to the tournament. I guess that it's set a bit earlier in December than the previous year, because otherwise Daniel would be over 18 years old, and it comes down to Barnes versus Daniel. And now the ref says that no face contact is allowed, so it looks like they changed the rules since last year. It comes down to sudden death with Daniel getting the point without using some secret new technique. And again, it just ends. All three of these have just had him win and then hard cut the credits. Around this time in 1989, a short-lived animated series ran on NBC. It involved Daniel and Miyagi going on adventures together to recover a magic shrine, and their journey takes them all over the world. Although the two main characters would be voiced by new actors, Pat Morita actually did contribute opening narrations to every episode. It was not well received and was quickly cancelled with only 13 episodes. Five years went by and the next entry didn't arrive until 1994 with The Next Karate Kid, the first entry not directed by Avildsen. And we start with a ceremony with Miyagi returning, celebrating the 442nd, his World War II crew, and we're in Boston. Miyagi meets with the widow of his commanding officer, and that guy's granddaughter is a million dollar baby who is a master of delivering exposition. My name is Julie. My mother's name was Susan. She was killed in a car accident with my father and they're both dead. That's how I'm gonna start referring to people. I'm just gonna list off their backstories. Miyagi offers her mom the chance to go stay at his garden in Los Angeles while he stays to take care of Julie. And oh dear, Revok is here. He's the head of a weird security squad called the Alpha Elite and Julie meets a guy named Eric who has this car. And here's a mistake that's nothing, not important. It's so minor and not one of the things I normally notice because they don't affect the movie, but I'm so trained to look at these stickers anymore to see if they reveal a date, and his car has this gray sticker on the dash with a nine on it. She gets in and they drive somewhere, and when they get there, the, the, the sticker has magically turned green. Miyagi mentions he used to live with Daniel, so I presume that he finally went off to college after putting it off a bit, and in this mechanics, there's a calendar up on the wall. We don't see the date on it, but the days match up with 1992, so that may be our actual year. Miyagi begins to train Julie, and she's shunned by monks when she tries to kill a cockroach, and he makes this big speech about how he still respects all living things, as if he wasn't trying to pinch a fly in between chopsticks just like two movies ago. 
The monks danced to the Cranberries' Dreams, which came out in late 1992, so I guess again it may be 92. And weirdly, all the wiki entries for this film place it in real time 94, but I'm not really seeing evidence for it in film. Julie has a birthday and I guess she turns 17 and then they go back to school and hold up, hold up. How long is Julie's grandma gone for? How long is she just comfortable up and leaving her life behind and leaving her granddaughter in the care of some guy that she's not that terribly close with? How long was her karate training at the temple that she could just up and leave school? I mean, I'm the timeline guy, so I should probably know that answer, but either way, the answer's wild. If it's a really short time, then how much could he have trained her? If it's a long time, uh, can I get a Miyagi in my life who will just come over and take care of my kid and I'll, I'll go chill in some garden in California? Well, I'm in California. I guess I mean somewhere, somewhere else in California. Miyagi does his whole healing hand thing on a damn bird? Oh, and, and this sticker has the inspection colors that expired in 1993, which seems to back up the 92 date. I mean, I guess it could also be 93, though. The Alphas attack Eric, and is that the Goggins? Julie fights Ned, and she wins, and Miyagi takes out Richter. So by this point, the franchise had run its course, but 16 years later, it was decided that a remake was in order with 2010's The Karate Kid. We immediately see a growth chart for a child that started kindergarten in 01 and turned 9 in 06. So they were born in 1997 in August and in 07, um, daddy died? Why is that something you mark your height for? Oh, exposition. It's Dre here and he marks that they're moving to China, but he doesn't mark the date. And he should check out China because anyone born on this planet should have a planetary citizenship enabling them to freely explore their home. They take a plane as I assume that, that he went through customs even though he was born on this planet. His new neighbor is coincidentally American and there's lots of trees outside and, and most trees are blue. He goes to find the maintenance man and he's a super cop, the cop that can't be stopped, and he's called Mr. Han here, not Miyagi, which makes sense given the shift to China instead of Japan, and Dre says that he's 12, which means that this is either set in 08 or 09, depending upon what month it is, considering his birthday is in August. He meets Mei Ying, but doesn't introduce himself by saying, lately people call me Scoop Life, but he runs into trouble with Chung, a bully. There's a billboard up for the China Economic Census, which is something that is done every five years, and one was done in 2008. So that appears to be our year here. So it's 08 post-August. He covers his black eye in the mirror, but how can mirrors be real if our eyes aren't real? And he goes to check out his new school, even though school is the tool to brainwash the youth. He gets bothered by Chong and his two friends, and why is it always three? Why is it always three? Things escalate because Dre doesn't remember that whenever you disagree with someone, just remember the dress and accept that you guys are seeing two different things. Han saves him, but it's uh, not the same to see him go up against kids that are like 12 to 15 years old. Im important thing to stress here is that he uses Kung Fu, and they call it Kung Fu, not Karate. They challenge Chang to a tournament and Han begins training him. And they go to the Shi Shi Festival, which is the Chinese Valentine's Day, and takes place around early August, which is kind of odd because in 2008 it was on August 7th, one day before Dre's birthday, which I feel like someone would mention. In 2009, it was on August 26th, and they've been in China for a couple of weeks now, so it's possible that he just turned 12 before they moved, and that this is 2009, and that economic census poster was just outdated. He and Mei Ying start to get closer, and people think that a relationship makes you whole, that it's like two 50%s coming together make 100%, when it should be two 100s making 200%. Okay, that's the last one, I promise. Okay, one more. The biggest flex that anyone will ever have is dying. Their training continues and there's certainly a different dynamic with watching a grown man 
train and hitting a 12 year old kid um, then there's a calendar up in Dre's room saying it's June 2009 so uh, that makes sense considering that he would indeed be 12 years old then and would turn 13 that August but it doesn't quite line up with the Shishi celebration but I guess for just whatever reason they had it earlier that year there's the possibility that they got there in August of 08 and the training regimen has stretched into the next year and almost a year passes over the course of this film, although that seems unlikely. This text from his mom confirms that it's June 8th, but wait, Han says that it's... It's July 8th. Does this movie even know when it's set? We find out that Mr. Han's wife and child died in a car wreck years ago and the tournament begins with Dre advancing ahead, which is for some reason set to the Chili Peppers version of Higher Ground. The finals end up with Dre versus Chong, of course, uh, but wouldn't, wouldn't one of these be funny if the bully guy got knocked out in like the semis and the karate kid just had to end up fighting off against some rando in the finals? They repeat the leg stuff. You said that when life knocks you down, you can choose whether or not to get back up. He didn't say that. You're, you're thinking of Chumbawamba. He continues on taking on Chong and he does some sort of crane kick flip thing. I don't, I don't know. Uh, he, he, kick, he kicks him and wins and that's all over. But remember, um, never go inside cell phones at night. Before I get to this next part, we have to go back a bit to 2007 and check out the video for Sweep the Leg by the band No More Kings. In it, we see William Zabka returning as a bottomed out Johnny watching Karate Kid with the other Cobra Kai guys, but he's not actually Johnny, he's William obsessed with Johnny. But there's also a weird Raising Arizona tribute thing happening. John, she's gotta go. Honey, now, he has a point. You, you need to have a little shiver and show a little bit of respect to my friend. At Martin Cove is Smalls and Ralph Macho appears at the very end. It's not like a part of the timeline or anything. I just thought it should be mentioned because I think it's very likely its existence led to the creation of... Cobra Kai, which started in 2018 on a very small scale, premiering on YouTube Red and was such a success that when YouTube abandoned making shows, Netflix snapped it up very quickly and continued on with it. I'm not going to cover every ounce of the show because it's four seasons, but there's, there's plenty that time into our timeline. First off, it establishes very definitively, the finale of the first film is taking place on December 19th, 1984. So that confirms that year. It then gives us Johnny and what it says is present day. And we see that he has a kid or relative that was a soccer player in 2010. So we're past that. He's still in Reseda and so is Daniel who has a handful of car dealerships and is quite successful. Johnny still karate's though, and when he meets up with Daniel, he insists he won with an illegal kick, which we established it clearly was not. Johnny reopens Cobra Kai, and meanwhile, Daniel is happy and married with a couple of kids, and it's said to be 34 years later, so we're set in 2018. The first season introduces many new characters, including Johnny's son, but over the course of the first four seasons, it brings back legacy characters Kreese, Tommy, Bobby, Jimmy, the other Cobra Kai boys, even though they couldn't get Dutch back, and Ali, Lucille, and even Chozen and Kumiko and Yuna, the freaking little girl he saves, all played by the original actors. Honk. Season 4 brought back Terry Silver, and Mike Barnes is confirmed to be returning for Season 5, and at this point, who knows which other characters they can get to come back. Although clearly Mr. Miyagi is not one of those with Pat Morita's passing back in 2005. The character is also passed on in the show back in 2011, even though his tombstone shows a different first name than they stated in The Next Karate Kid. Two things though, the 2010 remake is confirmed to have not taken place in the same universe, so there will be no crossover there. And although they stated that the cartoon is not exactly canon, they did have an Easter egg of having the shrine appear on the show. So there you have it, it's five movies that I guess sort of make sense. Uh, the continuity works 
for the most part, Daniel's age really doesn't, it's not much sense there. And of course, there's some weird date inconsistencies with the remake. Um, but it was kind of fun to check out these classic locations. This is another one right there. This is the, uh, the restaurant that Lucille and Daniel ate in while they were waiting for the Cobra Kai team to be done. Um, so there's that. But I don't know if you've seen these movies and enjoyed them, of course. Let me know down below uh, if you're enjoying the TV show. Let me know uh, if you if you like that as well too. And of course, as always, hit that like button. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying it, and check out my Patreon page. These are the patrons over here, and they help support this channel, which you can do too at Patreon.com/MovieTimelines. Appreciate that. And in the meantime, I'll see you very shortly for another great video. Thanks, guys. Bye bye.